Hello everyone and welcome back to a new video in our Autodesk Robot Structural Analysis Tutorials. In this video we are going to discuss a new feature that was added to robot I think in 2022 called Load Takedown uh, Building Design. And in today's video we're going to shed light on this new feature and see if it's really new or if it's basically a rehash of other features. So without further ado, I hope you enjoy the video, so sit back, relax and enjoy the show. Alright, so I will start this project by clicking load takedown building design. Now, I'm not going to make a full building design. We have a series dealing with this linked on the top right and I will be linking to it and relax. I'll be continuing the series very soon as well as all the other series like the bridge series and the ADSB, the Autodesk bridge design series. Those all will be continued in due time. But today I'm going to be talking about robot. I'm going to assume that you know the basics of robot. If you don't know the basics of robot, then please take a look on the top right. There is a playlist that takes you all the way from the basics of Autodesk Robot. Today, I'm going to explain the load takedown analysis in Autodesk Robot. So I'm going to go to my grid and I'm going to create me a mock-up structure that is very quickly done without much attention to detail. So I will make me like, I don't know, three spans, each meet, each one of this five meters. This is in the X. I'm going to make me four spans. Each one of those is four meters and the Y. In the Z, I'm going to have a story between 0 and 3.5 meters. I'll apply and close. Now, here I will define me a very quick structure. So I'll define me some beams. I click on the beam icon. I select reinforced concrete beam. For the section, I'm going to define me a new section. I think I have a section defined, but let me just check. Yeah, there it is. But I'm going to define me a new section. I'm going to define me a beam section that has a width of 250 and a height of 400. I'll add that and close. And now I'm ready to draw. You could, in the beam section, apply something called reduction of moment of inertia based on the ASI code. I'm not going to do this, but I have done this in previous videos. I will do me a quick beam drawing, so I'll just basically beam this entire structure like this. And then maybe I'm going to add me some columns, so I click on the column icon, and then I will basically uh, select reinforce concrete column, and then I'll define me a column. I'll define me a I don't know, 300 by 300 column. I could reduce the width of inertia based on the ASI code requirements, but I'm not going to do this because I've done this before and I'm not focusing now on the code requirements. So I'll just add that and close. I have a little one in brackets because I've defined this before, it seems. So I'll just select it now. And now I'll draw it down. There is down Z. So just click everywhere where you want to have a column. And that's it. I'm just adding me some columns. Notice this is a very simplified structure. It is in no shape or form uh, a real structure. We have a building series that is talking about a real structure. And I think my next video there is going to be about the Raft Foundation, which is going to be very soon. Fantastic. Now we have done our structure here. And now I'm going to make me a slab on it and load the slab. If I click on slab, you will notice that because we are, we are in load takedown, you can see that there are two new models called load takedown slab and load takedown slab. One of them is one way and the other one is two way. If you click on it, yeah, click one way and select this, you can see something very strange. You can see no finite elements, no stiffening, and the simplified trapezoidal triangular method. And here is the thing, and this is an important statement I want to state. The entire load takedown system in robot is a rehash of the usage of claddings in robot. I will show you how you can achieve the same effect uh, using the regular building design at the end of the video because I want to make a comparison. But for now, I want to continue my load takedown design. It has one advantage which is not mentioned in the building design and I will be talking about this at the end. By the way, if you select shell, which is basically the building design system, it will not work. Let me show you if you select shell. Now, you should not select shell, but if you select shell and apply, or basically select your thickness or add your thickness if you want. I think I'm going to select my thickness here, C150. You could also add and, you know, write your name here, C150, for example, thickness 150 and material concrete. I'm just going to select it and I'm going to draw me a one singular contour just from here to here to here, to here, and to here. Notice I'm drawing using shell. This, as strange as it sounds, doesn't work in the load takedown analysis. I will show you why in a moment. And I will show you how you change this. 
If you don't want to have the error, just select the slab you want and draw it. I intentionally made a mistake here. So let's see how the robot will actually react to me. In the loads, I'm going to add me only one load uh, case, which is dead load. And in the dead load, I'm going to add me a load, which is going to be negative 10 kilonewtons down in the Z. Those loads are just made up because my point here is to show you what a load takedown analysis is. If you run the calculation, you will be faced with a red message that tells you there is an error. It tells you here, one of the applied slab calculation models does not support or is not supporting the load takedown analysis. Now it continues the analysis, of course, by the way, but there is a problem because you're using a shell. This works perfectly fine in the building design, but doesn't work at all in the load takedown analysis. So this is the reason why it doesn't work. Now, if you want to make it work, you can delete the mesh first of all by clicking on this mesh button options and then just put the X. Then you could delete the entire slab. You can delete the slab and then go define a new slab with the correct model and then add the load. However, I want to fix the problem quicker. So if you select the floor, you can see in the object and inspector here, you can see in the properties of the floor that its calculation model is shell. You could actually change it from here. And if you select two-way uh, takedown slab, it is as if you would have deleted it and applied it again as a two-way slab and then added the load. So this is faster. Now, if you run the analysis, nothing should happen. Everything should seem to be fine. And uh, yeah, you have your first load takedown analysis. Now, before we dive into the uh, results, I'm going to copy the story here. So I select, I right click on the story, select stories, and then copy the story just to make a structure out of it. I'm going to copy it, I don't know, five times, for example, and I'll add that. Yes, and now I have five story structure, or I think six story structure, because I copied five. By default, filters the structure. You can select the structure, the story you want. I will remove the filter story to see the full structure, and I'll run the analysis again. You notice, robust analysis here is much faster than the building, because it's an approximate analysis. The question becomes, what is happening in the load takedown analysis. It is basically a simplified analysis where you have tributary areas on beams. According to Robot's own website, it states that this load takedown analysis is kind of a preliminary analysis that helps you perform a preliminary design or even prepare loads to be added to a different software. First of all, if you right click here on any place and select display, you can actually go to loads and select something called load distribution regions. And if you apply that, you will see the load distribution regions, which is basically the two-way system that has been done. You can even add something called uh, loads gener forces generated automatically, and then you will see the forces in its trapezoidal and triangular glory. Fantastic. Now, those are the loads that were applied on or calculated based on this load takedown analysis. If you are a subscriber to me, and you are following my videos, you should know that this has been done before by using geometry claddings. And in claddings, you could basically add and define your cladding. Now, there is a small difference between the cladding and this. The small difference is that if you add a cladding, there is no self-weight for it. So another option to achieve this same effect is in the shell to change the shell into a one-way shell. Why do we want to put make takedown analysis? because it gives you access to something really cool. Let me show you, look, I've shown those loads, it's kind of a mess now, using the display. If you go to display, I was able to show you the loads by clicking on loads and automatically generated and distribution regions. Now I will click on this button, which is here, default display settings, to put it back to defaults. Let's see what the load takedown analysis adds to robot. In the results, if you go to diagrams for members, nothing changes. You will get the typical moment diagrams and everything is A-OK. -okay. Nothing has changed. Robot behaves similarly to what you are used to see. However, in the results, there is something called load takedown tables and load takedown diagrams. Let's click on diagrams first. This is cool because it, pro provide, because it provides you with ready calculated values. If you click on columns, you can see the load on the column as a concentrated load. You can click here to show the load values. It's kind of a mess because I have so many loads. Maybe I should filter the story and now I can see the loads on the story. This is the load on the column from the tributary areas. Of course, this is not 100% accurate, but it's a quick approximation. And that's what we do when we do our hand calculations. 
you calculate the tributary area around the column and just add the load. Now this is shown for all the stories. You can go for a single story and then it shows you the action per one story. If you go to cumulative, you can see all stories. Of course, the higher you go, the less the action becomes which makes sense. There is also load distribution regions. If you click on that, you see the typical load distribution regions. So I told you, it seems that load takedown analysis is just a rehash of all the things that you already can do in robot. So it's kind of strange that Autodesk markets this as such a big new thing because it already existed since ages. But well, it's good marketing and people like good marketing. Unlike what I do, because I'm unable to market my software so far, although we are still on the, in the process of that. Anyway, um, if you go to Beams, you can, for example, click on Concentrated. Uh, let me just remove the columns first. Now, the one where there were no concentrated beam loads, it would exist if there is a beam on beam action. Distributed detailed values shows you this, which is actually, you can get it from here. You can just go to this display, and in the loads, you can see that it's a trick. It just clicks on... It's basically force generated automatically. So it's nothing new. You can see anything now on walls. You can see the same thing about all those forces. So this entire load takedown analysis is just a quick method of analyzing a structure approximately. Yeah, that's the new feature that Autodesk seems to have added in 2022. If, I, if you think that my mind is blown, I'm unfortunately, I'm not, to be honest. I'm really kind of, uh, I think my opinion on this is kind of like meh. I don't know. It's, it's cool, but not really that cool. Let me just, for the sake of comparison, let me just select, for example, story one and show the concentrated loads on the columns. Now, this fe feature is good, yes, because you can get the loads on the columns. And this feature is also maybe good because you can get the loads on the beams. And then you can export the loads on the beams on other software. You would think, of course, why would you do that? Because maybe you want to analyze a pre-stressed concrete beam and the robot is unable to do that. So you want to export those values onto your uh, tailored pre-stressed design of concrete. So I think this is interesting. What is also interesting, and this is really interesting now, is if you go to results and in the load takedown tables, we see some really beneficial tables, let me say that. Because if you go to column loads, you can see the column, you can see the total load. It's kind of a very good table that you want to check. And even in the tributary area, you can see the area that each element is carrying. Some of them seem to be carry zero. I'm really surprised why. That's very odd. I see only zeros here. Ah, okay. I see only zeros because I think it's the same area for all the stories. It's still strange, but okay, I guess. For the columns, it shows you also tributary areas. This is very good. Uh, beam loads, you can get those loads if you want. Or you can just pick them out from the drawing and so on. So this is new. This is actually new stuff. Still not really blowing my mind, but it's a thing that happens in robot. Tell me in the comment section if you think that this has a very, very good reason to exist, because I can do exactly the same uh, using a different technique. So stay tuned for that right now. I just print screen this for comparison purposes. I think the reason why this exists is because it kind of makes this approximate analysis quicker and more streamlined. Because if you do it using the uh, building design, then there are some extra clicks you need to do to achieve the same effect. Now, are we going to achieve the same effect? I don't know. Let's try that out. Let's close this now and let's do this again. I will just save it here. I'm going to try. I'm going to start new and fresh because I don't want to have any effects between the two structures. OK, so new building design this time. So I'm going to do this very quickly now and I'm going to make me a building using the building design. So I think this will be sped up by the editor. Enjoy this because I have to explain this before. I just noticed that I think, I'm not sure that existed before, but I think that if you do one-time load takedown slab, it will always exist. It's, I think I virused myself, but I will just choose my own path and I will say my shell to way, and there will be no finite elements. It will not be without stiffening and it's gonna use two-way trapezoids. And add and close that. I think this, those two things got added and will stay there after you do the load takedown analysis.
Okay, so we, we have finished our modeling and we calculate everything. And this is done using the building design. So if you go to results, you don't get the load takedown results here because you're not in the load takedown uh, system, but you can still mimic it because if you right click here and go to display, you can still show in the loads, the load distribution regions and the forces generate automatically. You can see that this feature existed since the beginning of time. It seems that Autodesk realized that not many people realize that this exists, so they kind of flushed it out in something called the load, uh, what's it called? Load takedown design or something. I forgot the name actually. So let's take a look on the reactions. Um, let me see. So let me just go to the reactions results, uh, diagrams for members, and go to reactions, ask it for UZ, FZ only with descriptions. I'll apply that and I should get that's not the same reaction. And I think I know why. I was like straight, I was like thinking, wait, why is the force on the column here? not the same as the force on the column in the other model where you use building design. It turns out that the, even the column forces, in the beginning I thought that the column forces are calculated using the reactions of the beams, but it turns out no. Column forces are calculated using the reactions of the beams for this element, for this type of structure, but not the case for the load takedown analysis. For the load, for the load takedown analysis, it's gonna be calculated based on the areas, it seems. So I think we'll learn something new every day. You can still do something similar to the load takedown analysis by using the structure like this and using your shell to weigh. This is a model that you can define. No fine elements without stiffening and simplified. However, still using this, your building design analysis is gonna be more accurate than your load takedown analysis. Takedown analysis is based on approximations only. So yeah, now my final thoughts on that is, I think the load takedown analysis is kind of a remake of the characteristics that robot already have. It can be interesting for some cases if you want to perform a quick analysis and quick design. And even you could, you could also, and this is I think where it shines, you could also take the results from the load takedown analysis and export them on other softwares. Um, but uh, rather than that, I think that building design has all the tools you want. So I don't know, tell me in the comment section if you think that it's really worth trying. Maybe I'm missing the point here. I'm not really that uh, enthusiastic about it, but I had some requests telling me that, hey, this load takedown analysis seems to be really cool and crazy and complicated. So I thought, hey, I'm going to give you a video about that. So yeah, that's everything I wanted to talk about today. I hope you enjoyed. And in the end, I want to give a low takedown sized shout out to my DHL members in the contributor level and the helper level whose names are going to be shown on the screen. I want to thank them from the bottom of my heart as the support to the channel is priceless to me and enables me to provide you with videos on time and with a certain quality I try to achieve. And for that, I am forever thankful. In the end, I hope that you enjoyed the video and you found it beneficial. If you have enjoyed the video, then please consider liking, sharing, subscribing, commenting, and so on. Especially subscribing, because it helps increase the reach of my channel. As per usual, this is the Civil Engineering Essentials channel, and we'll catch you in the next video. Bye-bye.